Everywhere, Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market update for Friday, the 9th of December. What's going on with DuPont and other tall tales from Europe? Stocks in the news. DuPont, the most valuable U.S. chemical maker, cut its 2011 earnings forecast by 10 cents. We analyzed the stock for you today. Euro up, euro down. Today, we take a close look at the euro and see if you should be long or short this currency. Stocks on the move. We'll also be looking at three stocks today that are having big moves and analyze if these moves are for real. Now, let's take a look at those and other markets right now and see how we can protect and grow and expand your wealth in 2011. So let's go right to those charts. And we're on our homepage here at Market Club. You can see right here, my Adam Hewis. Now let's go to our portfolio. And here we are at the portfolio. First stock we're looking at is DuPont. And as you can see, it's already got a minus 100. So let's just take a quick look at that chart. We've got a lot of charts to go through today, so I want you to get the most out of this experience. So you can see DuPont opened dramatically lower. But the important thing to remember in this exercise is where were the trade triangles? And the trade triangles were already short from 50. So even though the market came down dramatically, it was not a surprise to the trade triangles. That's why I say the markets tend to anticipate and know what's going to happen. Very, very, very seldom do we get surprised on forecasts, earnings forecasts that are contrary to what our trade triangles have to say. So here you look at DuPont. Obviously, all our triangles are red, indicating lower prices. I would say this is not the time to be looking at DuPont to get long. I would wait for our triangles to get green, and then I'd be looking to be a buyer. But if we take this out just to step out, just for a couple of years, let's see, even to a maximum, you can see we've been all over the board here, lots of lots of action. But certainly, if we just look the last uh, couple of years, you can see this market's been coming down. So nonetheless, let's see how that plays out, and let's watch those triangles very carefully. Next market we're going to look at is a big move today. It's up over 9% for the day. It's called PAL, P-A-L-L. -L. And we found all of these basically using our smart scan technology, which is right here, right up here. So let's just go and take a look at that. We already know it's 100, but the question is, was it 100 before it got there? So let's just take this, put our trade triangles on. You can see we've got a buy right here at 5408. And we're currently trading at 57.37. So basically, before the news came out, we actually anticipated that was going to be a buy and pop, popped it up today. So again, you can see these other prices, 45 on the weekly and 54 on the daily. A plus 100 strong trend. Looks like it wants to go higher. It has a large energy field underneath. Good call. Let's go to our next market. The next market we're going to look at, we're going to just switch a little bit here to, uh, let's go to Morgan Stanley. We'll just bypass the currencies. We'll come back to the currencies. But let's say Morgan Stanley's minus plus 55. Now, you get into that mode. It's a trading range. And look at how we look at this. The monthly is down. Weekly up. Conflict. You should be out of the market right now. Waiting for this either to go red or this one to go green and be positive. So I think for the most part, we are probably a little bit overbought. You can see we've come from the bottom of the Donchian Trade Channel to the top. I think probably for the next move, we'll see some maybe come back to 15, but it's going to be on the defensive. This is a big down move yesterday. It's not going to be easily overlooked. And it looks to me like we're actually about unchanged, maybe a little bit higher for the week. So let's see how that plays out. But nonetheless, it's a 55, meaning it's a trading range. You shouldn't really get too excited about that market. But it's a big move today. It's up almost 4%. But the the banks have been all over the place in terms of the, the moves. So let's not pay too much attention to get, to get excited on that one. Let's take a look at Monster Worldwide, which is also another big move, up 7.5%. 9%. It's a minus 70, so it's not an uptrend, it's a downtrend. So let's take a look, and here we are. Same thing there. You have been coming down, let's just take this out a couple of years. Yeah, you've been coming down steadily from 25, 26, all the way down to here. Is it time to get long? Not really. I want to see these triangles start getting green before I get excited about this. Maybe. Would I like to buy it if it goes over 10? Yes, I think that's a good chance. If it did that, then you're on to an, a new uptrend, possibly going to take this market up to 18. But right now, it's not the time to buy, in my opinion. We like to buy strength 
and not weaknesses. We don't like to catch falling knives. If that makes sense to you, lots of people say, okay, I'll buy, oh, it's pulled back, I'll buy it here, I'll buy it here, and suddenly they're underwater, a chunk of change. It's not the way to trade. Trade with the trends and with the triangles, you'll be very happy that you did. So let's go to our next market, and let's go back to the currencies. We're going to look at the euro versus the dollar, and we'll just pull this up in the last six months, and you can see it really for the last a couple of weeks, we've just started very, very choppy. The big level is this 132 level. If we go below there and close in a convincing fashion, then I think we'll have another push, a big push down. But generally speaking, we've got minus 90. Uh, we're short from the monthly from 139. Uh, from the weekly, 136.13. So those are all showing profits. It would look to me like the line of least resistance is on the downside. You can see our Donchian trade channels are checking down there. You're almost flat on the MACD, and you're sort of in the mid-range of the overboard over soul level. So there's really not a lot to get excited about in this market at the moment. So I would say if you're not short um, from these levels, I'd say just stay neutral or sell it if it on a close below 132. That would be my advice. Now you also have an inverse not an inverse, but you also have a ETF, uh, which is going to have a pretty much the same pattern. You can see that. So the reality is, would you want to be buying this ETF? And I don't think so. That would be my advice. You got a minus 90, so the trend is down, indicating further evidence of weakness. So same, absolutely the same picture. It's amazing how it's really, really mirroring the actual underlying asset, which is the euro dollar the euro versus the dollar. So anyway, this several markets we're watching very carefully. And I also want to go to the S&P 500, which is also a plus 55. This is, again, a trading range. We had a big down day yesterday. We're obviously coming back today, acting, the market's acting pretty well. Um, it's But it's really, really choppy. And it's, it's it just what comes out of Europe really drives this market. Now, the key thing is, as you may remember, we put our Fibonacci tools in here. We showed you this last a couple of weeks ago. This is the 61.8% retracement right on the money. Boom, a big move up. We're coming back down now. Can we come back to the 1200 level? I think the potential is certainly there if things backfire in Europe, but uh, it, the market has, is beginning to get a firmer tone, I think, uh, but we're mixed 55 means a trading range. So we may be at the top of the trading range. It would look to me as though we're at the top of the trading range. Then we can see this market regroup between the 1275 level and maybe the 1250 level, excuse me, the 1220 level. Let's, let's see how that plays out. But the first support comes in at 1211, which is a 38.2% retracement, and then a 50% retracement takes it down to 1155. Uh, oh, excuse me, let me just redo that because that's not correct. So if we're looking at retracements, we want to see a retracement from this level, what I gave you the, with the other retracement levels. We want to retrace from these highs, the highs we just saw, down to these levels. I knew 1,200, 1,201 is at 61.8%. We've already had a very close to a 38% retracement. 50% is 1,214. So we could see some support coming around the 1,220 level. And I think that's what we'll have to see, see how this market closes out this week. It's about, I would say, a little bit lower for the week. Uh, I think if we can look at a weekly chart, which is easy to do with Market Club, you can see actually it's a little bit higher. Let me take this, clean this up. So we're just about 0.74% higher for the week. We had a huge week last week, up 7%, of course. So let's see how this works out. Uh, and but. It looks like it's regrouping to try to go higher, in my my opinion. But mixed signals, really be conservative and stand aside. These are not good markets to be trading right now, at least with all the music coming out of Europe. So let's go back to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at is silver. Silver, the same pattern there. It's really kind of a sideways pattern, really not going anywhere to speak of. And I think it's been a little bit of a disappointment for the bulls and for the bears because of the lack of action here. So let's just go back. So you can see pretty much we've been flat since September and really not too much going on. Short term, we're up on the daily, weekly, and monthly. The odds still favor being short this market, but it's becoming less and less 
of a desirable trade, certainly as we go into the rest of the year, because after the 15th of December, it's silly season. These markets are going to get even thinner than they are right now. So really, really be, pay close attention to that and be careful. So the next market is spot gold. Spot gold is a little bit different pattern, even though it has 55. We still have the monthly that's up from 1430. It's still a very good looking market to us. Mixed on the weekly, which means you should really be, if you're an intermediate term trader, you should be out of this market for the time being. Um, if you're a longer term trader, you should still be long. So let's see how that plays out. But you can see the PSAR comes in today at 1700. And we got down there, we sort of got down to as low as I think 17 or 3, and then we've rallied from that level. So it looks like we've got support at the main number of 1700. So next market we're looking at is copper. And copper tends to go with the winds of the way in terms of the stock markets up. Copper generally tends to do that, go up alongside it. So here we are, the market, stock market's up, copper's up. But generally speaking, a mixed market there, trading range. Uh, much like many of the markets right now are trading ranges. So you've got to be really aware of that. And uh, But the longer term trend still looks to be negative in this market to us. So let's see how that plays out. And next market we're looking at is crude oil. Crude oil is actually below the $100 barrel level. It was actually over that level. And we, w we were not so convinced it was going to go higher. But we did have our pullback, our Fibonacci pullback. We, we talked about uh, last week a couple of days ago. So we pull back to the 61.8% retracement level was 97.84. We're currently trading at 98.36. I would not be too enthusiastic about this market for the time being, particularly this time of year. But generally speaking, we've got a plus 65, slightly in the trading range, but not quite out of that yet. But longer term remains positive. So let's go to our next market. Lots of markets to cover today, as I said. And uh, and that's the U.S. dollar index. And the U.S. dollar index basically is a plus 90, which we, we know is a positive trend. But you can see even there we were turned back from the uh, 79 resistance level. And you can see that the parabolic there is coming in at 79.18. And I think that's something to be concerned about. But generally speaking, the trend is still up. We're plus 90 now. And it looks as though we should at least close out the week on a positive note. So we'll see how that uh, we'll see how that plays out later today. But next market is going to be the Reuters CRB Jefferies Index, and that's minus 100. Now remember, we were talking about this market was up at, at 315, 315. We thought it'd come back down to test the lower levels of the Donchian trade channel and also to test the 305 level. Well, that's in fact come to pass. We're minus 100. If we get a good close below this level here, which is the 304.95 or 305 level, if we close, let's say 304.50, uh, which is in a big point down, I would say chances are we're going to have to see this market come under more pressure. But generally speaking, the trend is down, and I think that's something to uh, to really think about. One thing I want to share with you today, and that is uh, coming on the 24th of January and the 27th of January, we're going to have our very, very first Market Club Investors Summit. It's going to be held in Salt Lake City, and uh, we'd love to have you uh, come, to the, come to the conference. Uh, you can get more information on the numbers on the screen, 1-877-219-1482, extension 10234. And if you're currently watching this internationally, you can call 1-801-341-3981 extension 10234. Hey, this is Adam Hewison for Market Club. I hope you can get to the Investor Summit, Market Club's first Investor Summit. We've got some other people there that I think you'll really enjoy. And we're going to do our very best to teach you some of the tools and techniques that we use. And you'll be watching us live in the marketplace. It's a great opportunity. It's a great way to start out 2012. I'm not sure how many seats there are available. Someone is handling that for us. But uh, Give them a call. Uh, give, excuse me. Give us a call, and we'll get this. Uh, we'll get the show on the road. But look forward to seeing you in January, personally, and if you can make it. So, Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow with a weekend update. Have a great day trading.